Now then, folks, I've been creating myself a custom Space Marine chapter, and I'm going to give you some tips, because these is get to shoot Now then, everybody. So, like I said, I have been creating my own Space Marine chapter, and I'd like to talk through some of the things and decisions I made behind creating my own Space Marine chapter in the hopes that it might inspire some of the good folks out there to do the same thing. While I talk about it, I'm going to play some footage of me painting up my test model for the custom chapter. So, when you're thinking about creating a custom chapter, you've got to start at the basics. Why do you want your chapter to be different from the canon chapters? Because there are canon chapters aplenty. There could be many reasons for it to be different. Maybe there's a particular part of history, like normal history, you feel could be explored through a space fantasy combat setting. For example, I really like the Viking aspects of the Space Wolves. Not such a fan of the werewolf part of the Space Wolves. <laughs> so I wanted my chapter to be very heavily influenced by Vikings, by Norse mythology, and all of that kind of good stuff. So with that in mind, I started thinking about how I could create a Space Marine chapter I was like pumped full of Norse lore. So that's when I decided that the planet that this chapter came from was one that had regressed back to a medieval or I don't know, what's the period called like between the Romans medieval? Dark Age? Is it Dark Age? But they'd regressed all the way back to there and the Norse culture had re-established itself on that planet. The planet itself had lots of seas, so raiding was a really big part of the culture on this planet. And because the Norse ways had reintroduced themselves, they still they believed in Thor, and Odin, and Valhalla, and all that kind of good stuff. So it's from this thought that, okay, I've got my world, that's how it's steeped in the traditions of the Vikings. When the Imperium came to the planet, the way that they ingratiate themselves with the people of the planet was to say that the Emperor was actually Odin. And that's what the people on the planet believe. Because of the raiding parties, because of the like warlike people on this planet, it was decided that this would be a great place for a Primaris chapter. Kind of upgraded the world. They haven't done anything with the culture. It's still stuck in the Dark Ages. They just recruit heavily from this world for the chapter. That's why the chapter has so much Norse mythology and stuff. They believe the Emperor is Odin, so all the people who recruit from the world, so they must have carry some of that culture with them into the Space Wing chapter. Perfect. So, if you think about these sorts of things while you're creating your own custom chapter, it's going to inform a lot of the decisions that you need to make later about stuff. Once you've started to establish the law of your chapter, you'll be able to make decisions about what the Marines look like, what their combat doctrine is, all this kind of stuff. So let's talk you through some of the decisions I made about this chapter. I decided to call them the Gugnir. I think that's how you pronounce it. Swedish people, help me out if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But Gugnir was Odin's spear. That's why I thought it would be a nice name for the chapter because they believe the Emperor is Odin. So it's basically the Emperor's spear. I thought that would be pretty decent. So to do the colours for the Space Marine Armour. I did a good five minutes of research on Wikipedia to find out what were the main colours of the tunics and dyes and stuff like that they actually had during the Viking Age. And the two main dyes were a kind of woad blue and like a burgundy red. So they became my Space Marines chapter colours. The armour was all kind of a woad blue. They've got burgundy accents, a little bit of gold, because Vikings love a bit of gold. If you can establish your chapter's law, it's easy for you to make these decisions as well. For example, if you wanted to go full on hardcore knights of your crusading armies, that kind of stuff, you can go back and look at the heraldry 
of these crusading armies and apply that to your chapter. Equally, if you wanted to do something kind of more Incan, you can go back and look at the kind of Jaguar style, uh, you know, motifs that the Incas used to put on all of their things and you can make that and that would be a pretty cool space marine chapter with like Jaguars all over the shop and bright blues and greens and red oh I might do that for another chapter but you know the exact, these are the kind of things I mean once you start to establish your chapter's law the decisions kind of just flow from you you can also think about how your chapter's going to work as regards to combat doctrine culture all that kind of stuff so because the Gugnir are Vikings, essentially, space Vikings. They clearly are into, you know, melee and hand to hand and fast paced attacks. So, that chapter's going to be a lot of salt intercessors, bikes, fast paced attacks, stuffs, and some, you know, nice eradicator style heavy weapons at the back to blow shit up. And because of this decision I've made about the combat doctrine, it's going to inform a lot of the modelling that I'm going to do. So I'm not going to have anyone with sidearms. They're going to have their main weapon. They're going to have their bolt rifles, but I'm going to replace all their sidearms with like axes, knives, things like that. They're going to have a lot of power axes. Where I can, I'm going to put a lot of hand-to-hand -hand weapons on my marines. So maybe when you're making your own chapter, you can think about these decisions yourself. So. If, for example, you wanted to do kind of a take on medieval warfare, especially kind of the English and their longbow lines, then you can make a, a pretty decent gunline marine army. Let's say you were doing a kind of an army based on Napoleon era combat. So you could have plenty of like heavy weapon, cannon style affairs, gunline have your <laughs> you could even like do some daft things where you kind of instead of moving them in squads you can put them in columns <laughs> it's probably not you know tactically advantageous to do that but still you know but then you can put like cavalry bikes so yeah you know it all kind of works but you, as you can see you can think about these things and how it's going to evolve the way you model and put your army together the other thing I've done is I've got a load of shields this is kind of a bit of a mistake on my part. I wanted to get shields that would be big enough for Primaris Marines. Uh, I got some blade guards from... Uh, I got, basically, I got uh, the Space Marine half of the Indomitus box set. And so I need to do some kit bashing on the blade guard. Because the blade guard looked very much like a Crusader Knight. And I need to make them look a bit more Viking-y. So I need to do something with the shields. So my idea was I would get some nice, big, bulky shields, and those would be them. So I ordered some off eBay, didn't really pay that much attention to what I was ordering, and the shields I've got pretty small, not to fear. I have thought of a good reason for the people, or for the Marines, to have these shields about their person. I looked it, again, in my five minutes of Wikipedia research, that... When a Viking became a warrior, his shield became his. Like he had it crafted for him by a blacksmith, and it was his shield for the rest of his life. He took really good care of that shield because you know shield walls and those sorts of things were a very important part of Viking tactics. So a shield is super important to a Viking. So when an initiate goes off to join the chapter. His family will present him with a shield. And those that are successful initiates will keep that shield on their power packs for the rest of their life as a space marine. Cool, I can actually use these shields, and now I've also enhanced the flavour of my chapter, giving it a nice little spin, a little bit of flavour, just through making a mistake. <laughs> so there are lots of things you can do with these chapters. The basically the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you like. Another little thing I've done to add some flavour is one of the things I like about the HBO show Vikings is all the f like varied and interesting war paint that they put on. So I'm going to do a very similar thing with my marines. The war paint is going to be different for their squads. I'm not going to have shield mar um, pauldron markings out their squads. They're going to have, you know, 
war paint. So every squad is going to have different war paint, and the war paint is not just going to be on their faces, it'll be on their helmets as well. So on the test model, I've done a very simple kind of black bar effect, you know, really deep set eyes. But I haven't decided on exactly what they're going to be for each chapter, but you know, all these things add up to make a look like a rich army, basically. So that is my custom Space Marine chapter, the Guggenir. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about it. I hope if you're creating your own Space Marine chapter, I hope you can take some of the things I've done and think about what you'd like to do for your own chapter. Think about the law and how you can build the law for your Marine chapter and how that is going to inform the decisions you need to make about colours, combat doctrine and, you know, cool little kit bashings or whatever it is you need to do to make up a nice cool army. How, if you are already a proud owner of a custom Space Marine chapter, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. So please, leave me a comment, tell me all about your Space Marine chapter, and if I get a load, I might make, you know, a follow-up about cool Space Marine chapters. Also, please give this video a thumbs up. Interacting with the video like this will boost up Google's rankings, it's more eyes on my content, which is ultimately what I want, so you kind of do me a favour. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the cracking content I've got coming up. I've got loads of marines to go and paint now, but I'll catch you folks in the next one.